Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to get Unity set up using Unity version 2022.2 and a Meta Quest 2. So to start with, we're going to actually go to uh, Meta's website and we need to make sure we have the Oculus software installed. So a link to this page will be provided in the description down below and I will be using the Quest 2 and I want Air Link and Link Cable. So I need to download this software. So you'll download the Oculus setup software and we need to go through the process of installing it. Now I already have it installed and it's just a case of installing a piece of software like you would on any other program, but it does have a rather large download. So I'm not gonna do it in the video, just follow the process. It's very, very straightforward. So because I've got this already installed, I'm gonna close it down and I'm gonna open up the Oculus software. No, don't search it on Bing. Oculus. There we go. So you should provide it with a screen that looks like this. So I've got the current store page open. And if I go to my devices, I currently have connected a Quest 2 and Touch. Now I am connected via USB. You can do this via AirLink, but if you're using USB, you need to make sure you're using a cable and a USB port that is at least USB 3.0. So if I click on my Quest 2 and Touch and scroll down, I have USB test underneath setup and support. So if we click this, we can test our USB connection to make sure it's suitable for the link software. So it takes about 10 seconds to actually do, which isn't too bad. And you should get a little green check mark saying compatible connection. If you don't have a compatible connection, you might be able to get through using the Air Link, which uh, it's just a toggle inside of the headset when you're trying to enable the link software, which we'll get to later in the video. But for now, I'm going to quit the test and we're actually going to dive in into Unity. So here we are in our basic scene. This is just the basic 3D core project. It is not the VR template. So we're going to be importing everything from scratch. So to start with, we're going to go to Window and our Package Manager. And then we're going to go in packages in projects and change it to the unity registry and this will give us a list of all the packages unity themselves have made we want to scroll right down to the bottom of this and we want to import the xr interaction toolkit and xr plugin manager management so to begin with xr interaction toolkit and we press install we get a little spinning circle letting us know this is happening and we'll get a bunch of loading bars from unity right now there we go of it compiling all the scripts and everything from this package is being imported into our current unity project so now that this is done it is using the new input system which requires a restart of the editor when we upgrade it so i want unity to do this for me and it will automatically restart my editor after it's upgraded my input system and it will give me a nice little pop-up saying the layer mass requires an update and i can say i've made made backup go ahead because I've made no changes to Unity's layer masks so I have nothing to back up. So now that Unity is reopening the project for me it's yt underscore vr underscore setup and it should take just a moment and there we go and we get Unity back up we want to make sure this is uh, full screened and we have our package manager. So if we scroll down back to the bottom, we can see that our XR Interaction Toolkit has a nice little tick. And we're not done with this just yet. We want to go to our samples right here and we want to import start assets. So what this does is it gives us assets to streamline the setup of behaviors, including a default set of input actions and presets for use with our XR Interaction Toolkit behaviors that use the input system. So what this means is uh, we get a bunch of presets related to control input for tracking the controllers, which is great for actual VR development. So now that we have the XR Interaction Toolkit imported, we can go to XR Plugin Management and we can install this too. We need the XR Plugin Management to be able to send the feed from Unity to our Quest headset using Oculus Link. And that's just a simple install and done. So we can close down the package manager and now we need to set our project settings for VR development. So if we go edit and then project settings and then down to XR plugin management, we get this little window. Now we're using desktop development. If you are actually planning to build to the Oculus Quest, you'll need to make sure you go into your Android settings and enable the oculus settings there but we're just doing pc v 
VR development. So I'm going to tick the Oculus tick box. So this is going to import a bunch of stuff for us that will allow us to use the Oculus SDK and actually preview the headsets display. So with this done, we can see that it's added a nice little Oculus bit in this drop down and we've got some nice little settings. But we can close our project settings now as that's all done and dusted. So now how do we get our actual VR set up? Well, for one, we don't need the main camera as we're going to be importing a VR camera. So we can delete that and we can right click and go XR and we're going to add XR Origin VR. And we can click just to drop off the renaming. And here we are, we have an XR Origin, a camera offset, a main camera, a left hand controller and a right hand controller. So to start, I'm going to reset the transform for this. So it's a nice zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to create just a very basic little scene. So we have something to visually look at when we actually play this. So right click, I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to reset its transform and make it large. Let's say 100 by 100. And let's create a nice little cube that we're going to place nice and center of the VR viewport. So if we can click this, we can see our main camera. We're going to get a nice little view of this cube. We can go to our game view. This is what we'll see. Let's give this cube a little rotation just for visuals. And let's go to our assets folder and we're just going to create a material, call it yellow, just to give the scene a little color to make it pop. There we go. Actually, I think I preferred it on, a, on the floor. Let's create a white material. Assign that to a cube. There we go. That's a nice little scene. We can get a distinction between the sky, the floor, and the cube. Brilliant. So, right now we have our hand controllers but we have no visual representation for them. We have no 3D model. Thankfully, if we go to this nice little page set up by Meta, you can download an FBX and PNG of all of the Oculus devices. So as you can see here, Oculus Touch for Quest 2, left and right control FBX, and a PNG texture. So we're gonna download this file, agree to the terms and conditions, and we're gonna wait for this to download, and then we're gonna import it into our project. So this should just take a couple seconds. There we go. Uh, we need to extract this out of the zip. Open up Unity, bring this up here. Go to Oculus Touch for Quest 2, because that's the device we're using. And we want underscore div zero, as it has three levels of detail, but div zero will do just fine for us. So here we have our 3D model of the Quest controllers, but we also need the textures. So we want the next controller both underscore color 1k.png and here we are we've got a nice little quest controller texture. So now we're going to create a material for our controllers. Quest to controllers. And we're going to give the albedo of this the texture we just imported. So now we can begin giving our hands a visual representation of a 3D model that should be accurate. So we drag this into the scene. As you can see, it's already got the um, material applied, as I believe this does actually come with a material as well, does it? Because we've not applied this one. So as you can see, yeah, I believe it comes with one, but you can import your own if you might want to change the, um, the specular softness or even give them a nice tint. So there we go, we have a visual representation, but we need to set these to make sure they're the same transform position as our hands. To start with, we're going to unpack this prefab to allow us to just take the mesh. This is all we want, so we, ju we just want the mesh. We can drag this under the left hand, the right hand under the right hand, and then we can delete this. But because this is a skinned mesh renderer, when you press play, you might get some funky stuff. So actually what I'm going to do is replace this with a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. And we're going to set our mesh filter to, what is this, is this the left? 
left quest mesh too. And we're going to give this a texture. And we're going to do the same for the right hand. So mesh renderer, mesh filter. Open it up, grab the right one, apply the material. And there we go. We've got our nice little mesh. And this is just for basic visual representation. There is a whole bunch of stuff you can set up with the skinned mesh renderers to get things like analogs moving and button presses. But that's a bit out of the scope for this tutorial. So I'm just using a mesh renderer and mesh filter just to display the models so we can actually see the hand tracking in motion. So now that we've got this done, we can actually go to the left controller. And as you can see, we have an XR control action base component. And this has our positioning, rotation, tracking states, and inputs, but none of them are set up. Now, because we included our starter assets when importing the XR Interaction Toolkit, there is a preset for the left control and the right controller. So we can enable this preset and it's all set up for us. Now, all we have to do is set the model parent. So the model parent is actually itself, like so. And we can do this on the right controller too. Set it to the right controller and then set the model parent to itself. And there we are. We are good to go. Uh, the next step is we need to make sure that our inputs from the samples are actually going to be used to track our hands. So what we want to do is we want to go to our XR Interaction Manager and I'm going to add a Input Action Manager. And we're going to hit plus and we're going to hit the little circle with a dot and we're going to add the XRI default input actions. And this will just make sure all of the events get subscribed uh, to in the back end as well as give us tracking and buttons interactions for our little hands. So now that all this is set up, we're actually done and we're set up for VR development. If we press play, we'll get the view in the game mode, but we need to make sure we go on our quest and we need to enable Oculus Link. So here we are in the Quest 2 headset. If we press the Oculus button and go to their settings, we can see there's a button in the UI for Quest Link. This will open an option which will have a toggle for Air Link if we don't have a compatible USB 3 cable or port, but we do, so we're just going to press Link as we're all good and ready to go for Tethered VR. This will load into the default Rift software. We are now doing tethered VR development with our Quest 2, so we're good to jump back into Unity and continue over there. So now that we have Oculus Link enabled, we can just press play in our editor and we should have everything good to go and working. So as you can see, we've got our head tracking. Put the headset onto my face. If I bring up my hands, Oh, as you can see, the controllers are a little offset. That's because I forgot to reset the position. So let's just quickly fix this little issue. If I go to the, the meshes, as you can see, the Y is offset. So all we're going to do is we're going to reset these to zero. As you can see, they jump up to here, which is where our XR controller is based. And if we hit play again, we should be good to go. So you see we've got heads moving and we've got hands being tracked. As you can see, they can touch each other and everything is perfectly linked up. We can see our glorious cube and that's it. We're set up. You've got Oculus development working inside of Unity and you can go into the play mode and see it all happening in the game view for debugging and general VR development. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope it has helped you a little bit and uh, I'll see you next time.